You're standing in the electronics department, looking for camera lenses that you might want to buy. The lens description looks like alphabet soup, or maybe a secret code. EF? 85mm? F1.4? What do all those letters and numbers mean? I'm Cheryl with Focus Camera, and today I'm going to go through the basics plus a few more common abbreviations and explain them. Then you can buy camera glass with confidence because you will know what all of those scrambled letters mean. Now, if you need more than just the basics, be sure to check out the resources in the description below. There you will find this chart I created with a list of abbreviations for Canon and third-party manufacturers like Tamron, Sigma, and Tokina. You can download this and lots of other cool content too. Beginners often wonder, are lenses universal? And the short answer is no. In an upcoming video, I will go into this in more detail. But for now, what you need to know when it comes to Canon lenses is that they build their lenses for basically two categories, crop sensor or full frame. In the lens description, the letters that designate the lens type almost always come first in the lens description. EFS lenses are lenses designed for crop sensor cameras. These are cameras with APS-C sensors. EFS lenses are less expensive and lighter in weight. The kit lenses that come in some camera bundles are almost always EFS lenses. It's important to know you cannot use a crop sensor lens on a full frame Canon camera body. EF lenses are designed for full frame cameras. Full frame lenses are considered more professional, have a better build quality, and are therefore usually more expensive. The L or luxury lenses are the cream of the crop and have a red band of color around the barrel. Other lens types include CNE, which are specialty cinematography lenses, EFM lenses for the M series mirrorless camera system, and RF lenses for the full frame mirrorless camera bodies. You need to know the lens type, whether it's EF or EFS, so you will know if it's compatible with your camera and whether you will have a crop factor with that lens. For example, these images of a pond show a 50 millimeter full frame EF lens on a full frame camera. And then that same lens on a crop sensor camera. Notice how much of the image gets cropped or cut off. You might need to read up on this a little bit to better understand, and there are some links in the description below. The next set of letters and numbers we need to understand are the focal length. Focal length is measured in millimeters. This number is the distance between the camera's sensor and the lens's convergence point or focus point. It's not the actual measurement of the length of the lens itself. The focal length tells us how much of our scene will be captured, basically our angle of view. Shorter focal lengths have wider angle of view, whereas longer focal lengths have a smaller angle of view and a higher level of magnification. In other words, a 400 millimeter lens will bring a smaller area of the scene closer to you than an 18 millimeter lens. Different focal lengths are better for different types of photography. So understanding the difference between a 50 millimeter and a 300 millimeter is important. You will want to choose lenses that are the appropriate focal length for what you're photographing. Some lenses will have just one number, such as 50 millimeters. This is a fixed focal length. This is called a prime lens. When you see a range of numbers, such as 18 to 55 millimeters or 75 to 300 millimeters, it means that the focal length is variable or it has a zoom. A zoom lens allows you to switch between focal lengths so you can shoot different subjects in different scenarios without changing lenses as often. If you want more in-depth information about focal lengths and the differences between wide angle, standard, and telephoto lenses, there is a link in the description. There are also links to a few free cheat sheets you can download. The next set of letters and numbers is typically the aperture or aperture range indicated by the letter F and then some numbers such as F slash 1.8. Sometimes the F and the slash are not included and you will see a series of numbers in a ratio like 1 colon 1.8 instead. Aperture is the opening that lets the light in and it can be set to be open and wide or closed and narrow. The numbers on your lens indicate the widest possible aperture for that lens. Understanding the maximum aperture on a lens is also important because wider apertures allow more creative control over the depth of field. 
If the camera lens is a prime lens, meaning it has one set focal length, like 85 millimeters, and no zoom to it, there will be just one F number on the lens. That is the maximum or widest aperture the lens is capable of using. If the camera is a zoom, it has a range of focal lengths like 18 to 55 millimeters, then it usually also has a range of apertures such as f4 to f5.6. This is a variable aperture and it tells you the maximum apertures at the shortest and longest focal lengths. These numbers may also appear with the f, without the f, or as a ratio. With a variable aperture, the more you zoom, the narrower the aperture becomes. There are some zoom lenses that have fixed apertures, but these will be more expensive. Some additional abbreviations you might see on a Canon lens, probably towards the end of the lens description, would be abbreviations for IS, which is image stabilization. These are internal mechanisms that help stabilize camera movement. USM and STM are motors. The USM is the ultrasonic motor and the STM is the stepper motor that give you faster focus and they're very quiet. Letter codes like SC are the spectra or super spectra codings. SWC is sub-wavelength coding and DO is for diffractive optics. These are all codings and improvements to the glass elements that decrease reflections and flaring. DO lenses will have a green ring on the barrel. Now on to some other markings. Some lenses and camera bodies might also have Roman numerals like two and three to indicate the generation of the camera body or lens. A lens with a three is newer and probably has some upgrades compared to the same lens generation two. However, be aware that some manufacturers may use similar markings for other purposes. Tamron lenses marked DI2 indicate that it's a crop sensor lens and DI3 lenses are specifically for mirrorless. Lenses may have markings for macro or magnification, such as a number followed by an X, such as 4X. Macro might also be marked as a ratio, such as one colon one. Don't confuse this with your aperture, which is listed with the lens type and focal length. True macro allows the photographer to focus up close and get a life-size reproduction or larger on the image sensor. Macro lenses will often say macro on the lens, but be cautious. The label macro is sometimes used on lenses that do not really produce a true macro 1-1 ratio. Another element that might be confusing is the lens cap filter size, which is sometimes also listed in millimeters. Don't confuse it with your focal length that's part of the lens description. The lens cap and filter size will be listed either on the front of the lens or on the back of the lens cap. It's usually marked with a single number with MM or just the number along with a circle and a slash through it. Now you may also notice on your lens a group of markings, lines, or numbers. Sometimes these numbers are inside a little window. These numbers can be found on a variety of different lenses, and some of these numbers are found on zoom lenses, and they show you which focal length your zoom is set at, for example, from 18 millimeter to 35 millimeter. Some of these markings are to show you distances. These are mostly for landscape photography, and they're meant to help you figure out the closest and farthest points of focus, your front and back limits of your depth of field, at different apertures. The infinity marking may also be located on your lens. If you're interested in knowing more about these markings or more about depth of field, infinity focus, or hyperfocal distance, I've included some links in the description. Some lenses may also include a small series of other distance numbers on the side or end of the lens. These numbers indicate your minimum and maximum focus distances. Your minimum focus distance is the closest that you can get to an object and still have the lens be able to get clear focus on that subject. As a general rule, additional letters usually mean a better lens. Like this example, the lens on the right is considered a luxury lens and has image stabilization as well as a wider maximum aperture. However, it might also give you sticker shock. Do you need to memorize all those additional letters and numbers? No way, that's why I made that cheat sheet for you. So go download that chart in the description below and take it with you when you go lens shopping. So what is the takeaway? Understanding the lens type, EF or EFS, 
the focal length and aperture are fairly critical and you should practice learning and memorizing what those mean and how they will affect your photography. My lens buying tips would be that whenever possible, save up for better lenses. This means one, buy full frame or EF lenses. You can use them on your crop sensor camera body for now with a crop factor. And later when you upgrade to your full frame or a mirrorless, you can continue to use them at their maximum potential. This can save you from having to repurchase lenses later on, because as I already mentioned, their EFS lenses are not compatible with full frame DSLR camera bodies. Two, carefully choose your focal length so that it fits your photography genre and style. Each focal length has certain subjects that they work best with. Primes are usually better, crisper lenses, but zooms are more versatile. So whether you get a prime or a zoom is going to be up to your shooting style. Three, buy fixed aperture lenses when you buy zoom lenses, meaning that it has a low F number and keeps that throughout the zoom instead of a range. And four, if your budget allows, buy lenses with the widest apertures. Again, those will be more expensive. Not everyone can afford these options. A fixed aperture zoom costs more than a variable. And keep in mind, for example, that the difference between f1.8 and f1.2 as a maximum aperture may not make much difference for a beginner or amateur photographer, and that the higher quality might not be the most important determining factor. So always take your shooting style and personal preferences as well as your budget into account. Buying a lens can be confusing, but by doing a little bit of research, checking the specs, and knowing these few key abbreviations, you'll be able to buy camera glass with confidence. If you want to test out your understanding, check out the mini quiz in the links below and see if you've got it. I hope you learned something from this video. Please consider subscribing to our channel and click here or here for more videos from the Focused Camera channel. Thanks for watching.